Greetings, Marsh here, and welcome to episode 27 of my modded Factorio playthrough. Looks like we've got pretty much all of the resources ready that we're going to need for the bus. Just finished on uh, paper, which takes quite a bit, all the wood products, but the only other two things that aren't on here are the stone products, but we're actually making those already. Just way over here, you see the, the bits that are left over that we haven't actually connected it yet. Unfortunately, up here it's uh, pretty quiet because we've been using all of our resources just to make phosphorus ore. So one thing I thought we can do to save a little bit of resources is put all the phosphorus on one side of a belt. So we can do something like this. And that will only fill up half the belt, which means it'll take half the time to get that belt full. But uh, unfortunately, we still, we actually do need to have this filled up to supply the bus. So probably we should limit this chest to just one full stack. And then we need to send the bricks down and the stone. It's kind of, <laughs> kind of a bit of a mess here on how to do this. Uh, Let's see. Actually, it might work better to go the other way. A little cleaner, too. Let's see. Uh, let's make it a priority. To go to the right, which is going to the bus. And then our stone will need to come down as well. And with that, I believe we are ready to go here. All of this stuff is going to be replaced. None of it's going to be rebuilt in its current shape. So that means we need to pick absolutely everything up. And that means the inventory <laughs> is going to be very full of junk. <laughs> uh, there's really no way around that. So for now, I'll just place lots of chests. Ugh. Well, I was hoping they'd be bigger than that. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see, do we have... There we go some silos. Okay. And now I will just pick everything up and completely jam-pack my inventory full of junk. I could use robots to do this, the um, nanobots, but they use resources in order to operate, to pick things up like this. Um, so it's not really, it's not really worth using them. Um, it's a little different when you're building something that has to have resources in a very specific spot. You know, belts in a particular orientation and all of that. Like, it's not chaos, it's actually a design. In that sense, bots are very convenient, but when you're just picking stuff up, all you have to do is hold right click and walk back and forth, so it's not very difficult to just, uh, pick them up manually to save resources, at least until you have electric bots. And then resource consumption isn't a problem anymore. Okay, we've got all of the assembly machines removed and I straightened up the power lines just a tiny bit. Still kind of nuts, but in here they're all ziggity zaggity, so I just kind of cut them out. Plus I'm not sure if the power lines have enough reach to go over the belt, so Instead, I just cut it out, and now have it going the long way around. So how many resources did we end up with after all of that? There you go. That's how much was uh, on the bus at any given time for that. And that was such a small setup, and look at all those resources. Well, uh, before continuing to build this, uh, let me put all this back into the bus. And we can use all of these little loaders that I put in to just uh, insert any extras. Besides just resources, a lot of this stuff is things that we will use eventually. So we're probably just going to need to hold on to a whole bunch of it. Probably the cleanest way to do that is just to use the truck here. I'm going to try to keep it sorted a little bit so it's not quite a big mess. 
some of these things can be reverse factory. Like these copper pipes we don't need anymore. Not sure how I acquired steel pipes, <laughs> but there they are. Uh, they do go into some buildings, but I'm, right now I'm using the bronze pipes as my primary pipe, so well, I guess I'll just throw them in there. And we don't need these stone tablets. I don't know if it's going to reverse engineer the tablets correctly. Okay, that's pretty close to what we need. Any of the leftover junk is stuff that will go on the bus, so... It's time to get producing here. A component that goes into green science are circuit boards. The basic circuit boards. So we need to produce these first before we worry about doing green science. Let's move this out of the way. Let's do some hell mod. Uh, let's start a new line. What's it called? There we go. Electronic board, not circuit board. Okay, so let's say, let's make this. And since our factory right now is set up to make seven and a half insulating boards per second, Let's just set this to seven and a half and see what happens. Let's try to keep these separated to make them a little easier to understand. So it looks like to make seven and a half, it's gonna require eight electronics assembling machines and those are the ones we wanna use. We don't wanna use regular assembling machines because those are slower. And it's a one-to-one -one ratio, so then we just need a ton of copper cable. This might be the limiting factor here. Okay, so we need six machines making, uh, or requiring 11.3 copper plates. And I believe our factory is set up to do six per second. Each one of these, I think, does six. Yeah, so it's a crafting speed of one. Yeah, and four every four. So it'll have a slightly higher burst speed because these hold 200 plates each, so they kind of act as a buffer chest. And we could put faster belts on there so we can get higher than seven and a half, but that will only be for a short period of time. So there's really no point in building beyond that. So that's a limiting factor to keep in mind, but let's just complete the uh, basic electronic boards as well. We are already producing solder. The, the solder is going to be produced at the same rate as everything else. Everything's kind of lined up at 6 per second output and with a limit of 7.5 output for the belts. So we won't be able to keep up with that for long, but we don't need to worry about solder because we're already making it and then we'll be already making the circuit boards, so now the only thing we need are the electronic components. And we definitely want to do that. Electronics machine. So that's carbon. We can keep up with that carbon output. That's quite a bit, but we can keep up with that. And then tinned copper wire. And get rid of show hidden. So it's not uh, showing the reverse factory recipes. Which requires six per second, so that is the maximum of the factory. And then we need our copper cable, which is another seven and a half. So in total, to do seven and a half per second, we're gonna need 18, which we do not have, or anywhere close to it. So is there a, a nice little ratio we can use to make this work out? Kind of, but not really. Looks like it might work out pretty well to divide the whole ratio by three. So let's try 2.5. 
so as far as resources, that's more reasonable. It's funny that we were in copper overload up until this point. Not anymore when you're making circuit boards. So that's a little more than our maximum output, but that's close enough that I'm okay with that. So what do the machines look like? Two and a half to five to one, one and a half. 0.9. Yeah, whatever. It's probably close enough here. Now the question is, do we want to independently create copper cable for each type of board or do them all in one machine? You can see that copper cable is very voluminous. It's not very dense. So whenever you're dealing with an intermediate product that gets bigger, you really want to second guess yourself should you be putting it on a bus or on a belt at all, really. You can see how 3.8 plates isn't that much, but then bam, we've maxed out a white or a tier zero belt just like that with copper cable. So you have to be really careful about what you do with it. And the same also applies to electronic components as well. So you see how even in this modest 2.5 per second build, we're already going to need yellow belts just for <laughs> these couple of machines. So in that sense, I think that the copper should be kept separate. So in each line makes its own copper cable. And this becomes less of a problem later with angels because, let's see, copper one, copper two, because you can make coils as a much denser way of storing stuff. So you see here how you can make a copper coil that will now hold four copper wires. So it's actually more dense than copper plate. You can also roll up copper plates in the sheet coils too. So, And you could do this with most all of the uh, resources. So you really don't need a very large bus per item with angels if you use all of these technologies that will compress them into something that is more easily transportable. And the only disadvantage is that you have one extra step of breaking them back down to their base component before it can be used by an assembly machine. So it's pretty worthwhile. Okay, well let's start with the basic boards again. It looks like we have two going into three here. One thing to note here is that we're going to be assembler limited. So we only have two machines, but they only have two slots on the side. And you can get cute by like putting corner ones and whatever. But we actually need to have six inserters, but we only have the four. Well, in not too much time, we're gonna get access to the express inserters. And when we get those, it's going to be uh, quite good that we have space for four, but now we only need 2.1. So we're still gonna have to put four of them on there, unfortunately, but we will be okay. And when you look at the technology, huh, I guess they changed the colors. I was thinking, weren't, aren't these supposed to be blue inserters, the fast ones? I guess they wanted to align the colors with the change in speed. I think that speed is still the same though. Uh, 864 degrees per second is the speed of the blue inserter. Interesting. So let's go back here and change it to the fast inserter. There we go. Still doesn't change anything. We still need four uh, on the setup. Let's see here. But we unlock these pretty quick. Really, we just need the green science and then bam, we can make these things. They require bronze plate, steel, steel gear, electronic boards. We're going to have all these things. So we'll be able to make these very soon. So there's no reason to max out this setup right now. And in the sense that we're dealing with bad inserters or slow inserters. Because very quickly we'll be able to upgrade them and it won't be a problem. So just keep in mind for now, it's going to be uh, slower than it otherwise would be. And because we are assembler limited, we'll probably have to put these three on this side and just handle the copper cable. So we still need 
6.3, which we can't do. So we'll just do our 6 for now. Like that. And then the final bit we need is just one inserter going in for the basic boards and then one inserter going out for the finished product. So it would be something like this and something like that. Long and then a near side to fill up the belt. And then hopefully the power poles reach. Oh, they do not. Of course they don't. Okay, so we're gonna have to space these out a bit. Okay, that looks pretty close, and then it's going to need some lights. I'm not sure if one light or two will work, but we'll go with this for now. Let's grab this one. Now we need to place it. So for now, I'm actually going to remove these bricks right here. That's just to make it easier to tell uh, what part of the, the bus here is dedicated for the vertical components and the vertical belts and which ones are for the horizontal. So this way when we're placing undergrounds, we can kind of see where we're supposed to put them. Now up here it's like, well of course you just put it right there and go down. Well that's only if the belt is there. What happens if we're doing this way out here where the belts haven't been extended to yet and it more looks like this. Now, if there's another belt there, we can be like, oh, okay, we're supposed to put it there. But let's just pretend it looks like this. Then we're like, well, obviously, boom, or nope. It goes like this, boom, and then it extends out. When we have more than one type of brick, at least more than one type of colored brick, it can make this process uh, a little easier. This needs to go right here. And let's space it out a little bit so it's just not too crowded. And these undergrounds don't actually go anywhere, so we don't have to line it up with them. You just put it anywhere. And does it actually really matter? Nope, lots of space. So we can just start it somewhere over here. Are there any intermediates that we can throw in here? The answer is yes, we have quite a few. Let's see, where to connect it? Probably over here. Okay, so these need to be the near inserters. to deliver our insulating boards. So are those insulating boards used for anything else? Nope, it just goes into basic circuit boards, which means we don't need to have any splitters or anything, we can just send it straight into where we need to go. over here somewhere. Let's see, let's put it right there. Do a long-handed. And that way you can fill up this chest. What's wrong kind? With circuit boards. Seems to work okay from what I can see. It's not really getting loaded at all, so we can't really tell, but... And then for this, we need to have... A splitter. And 
then the underground to go past it. Although we don't need the underground there. Just like that. Kind of want to wait for these to run out of wire so we can see how it runs. I mean, it's going to run slow, so I guess it doesn't ra really matter too much to check it out because we know there's not enough inserters for it. Okay, and then where to put these circuit boards? Actually, I mean, I'm fine with putting them right here. Okay, there we go. That's about what we'd want to see. Where we have uh, limited inserters. Our next step is to make basic electronic boards. Probably do it kind of the same way. Where on the left side we build the components that go into it, and on the right side we inject the circuit boards to have the components put on the circuit boards and then it goes down the other direction. This tinned copper cable machine is going to be incredibly limited, even with fast inserters. It's still not going to be quite fast enough. So in that sense, I probably should do uh, some consideration here. Let's see. We can do something like this. And then it goes around. So we have our four going in. And we need two. Put the tin. Then the output will go somewhere over there. Okay. Seems good, so let's make a copy of it. And move it down. Now because of the way this is set up, it's not going to be quite lined up with that one. Because of the inserter limitation. So it's going to be spaced up a bit. And we are covering up this coal patch. Hopefully that doesn't... Uh, matter in the long run. And space it, let's say, two spaces out. Let's see, do we have any resources to throw in here? Yep, of course we do. Okay, so tin needs to come up through here. See, looks like uh, carbon's coming from over there already. We'll remove this just so it looks cleaner. And we need the solder and the basic electronic boards. Let's see. Solder is here. Do we need basic circuit boards for anything else? A gate. Clarifier, termite bots, robot brain. Okay, yes, the Atmos instrumentation, so. Weapons testing circuit board. Alright, so that needs to stay on the bus then. Everything is inserter limited right now, so it's kind of expected to see that it's not perfect. We need a box to store all this stuff. Like that. That is all the circuit board stuff. So now we need to work our way through the science.
but that's going to have to wait until the next episode. Thanks for watching, and I will see you later.